Once the glass has been removed, they slip the thin film under my eyelids. <laughs> and over my eyelids, they laid walls of cotton wool. I was not supposed to talk because talking pulled at the anchors of my bandage. You were asleep, the doctor told me later. Mm. I was asleep. I had to hold my own against the light of seven days. Mm. A fine conflagration. Yes, seven days at once. The seven deadly lights become the spark of a single moment for calling me to account. Who would have imagined that? And I said to myself, hmm, this is death. Well, in spite of everything, it's really worth it. It's impressive. <laughs> Often I just lay dying without saying anything. In the end, I grew convinced that I was face to face with the madness of the day. That was the truth. The brightness had lost all reason. The light was going mad. It assailed me irrationally. Without control, without purpose, that discovery bit straight through my life. I was asleep. When I woke up, I had to listen to a man ask me, are you going to sleep? A curious question to ask someone who has just been directly dealing with the day. Even after I recovered, I doubted that I was well. I could not read or write. I was surrounded by a misty north. But this was what was strange. Although I had not forgotten the agonizing contact of the day, I was wasting away from living behind curtains in dark glasses. I wanted to see something in full daylight. I was sated with the comfort and pleasure of the half light, yet I had the same desire for daylight as for water and air. And if seeing was fire, but I required the plentitude of fire. And if seeing would infect me with madness, why madly wanted that madness? <laughs> they gave me a modest position in the institution. I answered the telephone. The doctor ran a pathology laboratory. He was interested in blood. And people would come and drink some kind of strange drug, stretched out on small beds. They would fall asleep. One of them used a remarkable stratagem. After taking the prescribed drug, he took poison and slipped into a coma. The doctor called it a rotten trick. He revived him and brought suit against him for this fraudulent sleep. <laughs> really? Well, it seems to me that this sick man deserved better. This brief scene excited me to the point of delirium. <laughs> now undoubtedly I was unable to explain exactly what just happened, yet I was sure of it, that I had seized the moment. 
when the day, having come across against a real event, would begin hurrying to its end. Here it comes, I said to myself. Something is happening. The end is coming. The end is beginning. I was seized with joy.